we have two non-zero vectors, a and b, such that this is true. So the magnitude of a plus b is equal to the magnitude of a plus the magnitude of b. And we're trying to explain geometrically the significance of this statement. So this is quite an abstract question. We're not given any numbers or any directions. We're just given this equation and then expected to figure out a property between these two vectors. So let's try and represent this on a diagram and then see what we end up with. So we don't know which direction A is pointing in. Let's just say it's going this way. So what we have in this first modulus here is A plus B. So let's say that in orange we have vector A. And then let's say B is the purple vector that I'm drawing here. So this is B. So then A plus B would be the vector that connects the start to the finish. So this would be A plus B. And so what is this saying? This is saying that the magnitude of A plus B, so that will be the length of the blue vector that we have here, is equal to the magnitude of A, so the length of the orange vector, the orange line, plus the length of the purple line. And we can see from this shape that that is not the case. The orange length plus the blue length, so those two lines added up, do not give this line here, at least not in length. A plus B, the magnitude of A plus the magnitude of B, will be bigger than the magnitude of A plus B. So then how can we change our diagram to make this true? Well, if you consider bringing this point all the way down to this line, so in other words, A and B are going in the same direction, so we could have A going this way, and then B connected to the end of that going this way, so this is B, this is A, then that would mean that A plus B, which is the start to the finish, will be this vector. And then this is true, this statement is true, because we have the magnitude of A plus B, so the length of the blue line, is equal to the length of the orange line plus the length of the purple line. So how can we describe this in words? Well, we can say that the two vectors, A and B, must be pointing in the same direction. Now, bear in mind for this question, you can't say that vectors A and B are parallel to one another. Although they are parallel to one another, that wouldn't explain the significance of the statement geometrically. And I'll show you why. So I can draw a scenario where A and B are parallel so let's say that we have, this is vector A, and then vector B is going in the opposite direction, so this way. So they are parallel, although they're going in opposite directions, they're still parallel to one another. And the resultant of A plus B, which would be this blue vector here, if we're thinking about the magnitudes of all of these vectors, so the magnitude of A plus B, the size of that vector, is the length of this blue line. And that is not equal to the length of the orange line plus the length of the purple line added up together. The lengths of these two lines, the purple plus the orange, will be bigger than the length of A plus B in this scenario. So simply stating that vectors A and B are parallel, although that is true, it is true like we have in this scenario here, it doesn't explain the significance of the statement. You'd have to say that the two vectors are pointing in the same direction, which would also imply that they are parallel. Okay, so for part two, so we're given two different vectors, m and n. We're told that the magnitude of m is equal to 3. And then we're told that the magnitude of m minus n is equal to 6. We're told that the angle between m and n is 30 degrees. So let's represent that. We're not really given much information in which direction these two vectors point, so I'm just going to assign random directions. Let's say this is the direction in which m is pointing. And then n would be going this way, let's say. The angle between them has to be 30 degrees. Okay, and then we're trying to work out the angle between m and m minus n. So let's try and draw m minus n to try and figure out this angle. So m minus n, this is what we're going to be drawing, is the same thing as m plus the negative of n. So if we were to draw this out, we draw it head to tail, 
if n is going in this direction towards the top right, so if this is n, then minus n is going in this direction. So this will then be, draw m first, there is, there is m, and then n would be going in this direction such that this angle here is 30 degrees. So this would be minus m. And if you're not sure why this is 30 degrees, well, if I were to draw negative n on the end of vector m, so that'll be going in this direction, that's minus n. Well, here we have the z rule acting. These two sides here and here are parallel to one another, and therefore this angle here should be 30 degrees. And this is exactly what we have here. Okay, so in terms of the magnitudes, we know that the length of this top side is 3. This vector here would be m minus n. And we're told the magnitude of that vector is 6. So this length here should be 6. Okay, so from my rough sketch, we can see that this triangle is not ready to scale. If this is 3, then this clearly wouldn't be 6. So let's try and draw it a bit differently, so it's at least a bit more to scale, and then the angles will hopefully make a bit more sense when we actually work them out. So it might look something a bit more like this, where this is minus n, this is 30 degrees, and this is the m minus n. The magnitude of the top side is 3, the magnitude of this side is 6. Okay, so what are we trying to work out? We're trying to work out the angle between vector m and vector m minus n. So vector m minus n is this one here, going from start to finish. We're trying to work out the angle between the two of them. Let's call that theta. So what do we have? We have one side and the angle opposite to it. We have another side, but not the angle opposite to that one. For this angle, we also don't have the side opposite to it. So if we were to use the sine rule, what we can do is we can use sine 30 divided by 6 is equal to sine alpha, I'm going to call this angle here alpha, divided by 3. We can then work out what alpha is, and once we have alpha, we can then work out what theta is, knowing that all of the angles in a triangle add up to make 180. We can't directly work out theta because we don't know what theta is and we also don't know what the length of this side is. So we'd have two unknowns if we were to use that in our sine rule. So then sine alpha is equal to 3 over 6 sine 30, which is a quarter. Alpha would then be equal to 14.48. And then theta would equal to 180 minus 30 degrees minus the 14.48 which gives us 135.5 degrees and again that's just considering that all of the angles in this triangle add up to make 180 and that will be our final answer